गुड इवनिंग गाइस सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द मैप रूट्स फ्रेमवर्क टेक्निकल डिटेल्स दैट्स बेसिकली हाउ टू राइट द मैप रूट्स कोड इन जावा एंड टू कम टू दिस लेक्चर आई वुड रिकमेंड एवरीवन टू गो थ्रू द प्रीवियस रिकॉर्डिंग्स दैट्स लेक्चर नंबर 13 एंड लेक्चर नंबर 14 वेयर वी हैव कवर्ड द बेसिक्स ऑफ मैप रूट्स ओवरव्यू ऑफ मैप रूट्स ओवरव्यू ऑफ मैप रूट्स एंड नाउ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी दैट हाउ टू write the map reduce code in java just one minute okay so we'll start with the uh, i hope guys you have gone through them right i believe everyone has gone through the lecture number 13 lecture number 14 um uh, so i i i will assume that you have gone through them so i will start from here uh that uh what is the primitive data types what are the input formats and then uh we are going to write the map reduce code uh in java okay map or class reduce a class the driver class and everything so let us start with the uh, uh first the module first thing that um uh, uh, about the uh, first thing with the how to primitive data types but before that to give you an overview uh, what you have uh, learned in Uh, module 13 lecture 13 lecture 14 is you understand that a map reduce job starts with a map task and ends with reduce a task so you have you have a starts with map task and ends with zero or more reduce task so you have a mapper or map task you have reducer or reduce task and keep this diagram in mind so a map task or a mapper will receive an input key and an input value and as a developer your job is to write the uh, the map function the map method uh, which receives an input key and an input value and you do something according to business logic and you would and you will output the and you will give the output as some output as output key and the output value depending on your business logic business problem reducer also receives a key and a list of values remember that a key and a list of values so here it has its own input key i am writing as an input value and then you will emit a an output key and output value so this diagram should be there in your mind so when i am going to uh, uh write the map, map class reduce class or the actual code in java okay this diagram should be there in your mind and uh, so so all these things we are talking about input key input value output key and the output value these data types we are going to learn the next module is the data types so the explicit why we are talking about explicit data types because hadoop takes care of serialization deserialization through these data types and these data types are Uh, are a specialized form of uh, of or a wrapper over the java existing java data types but and these are helpful for your serialization and deserialization of the uh, uh, of key value pairs if nobody uh, nobody stops you to send the same key values as the java data types which they support right nobody stops you to send those key value pairs but then the the way the java serialization is done is little complex a little heavier okay and um, and um, that's why one of the reason i want you to guys find it out why why java serialization is used is not used in hadoop so this question i want you to figure it out that why java serialization is not used in hadoop why hadoop came up with their own data types or why hadoop provides its serialization deserialization through its own data types that's why Uh, the the that's why the first topic which we are going to talk about is about the data types and uh, you need to figure it out that why java serialization is not used in hadoop okay so even though hadoop is written in java and but it does not use as java serialization uh to, to transfer its key value pairs i hope everyone understands the meaning of the serialization Uh, in the basic terminology of serialization is you are storing the data you are storing the state of your object of your class or you are storing the state of your object 
So in Java, you have objects, right? So you want to store the state of that object. You want to store that state, so you either write into a file, and then you store the state by writing the data into a file, and then you deserialize it by reading the state back again, right? So that's a normal way of a serialization and deserialization, or, or a small example. But here, you have seen that uh, the output of the mapper transfers over the network to the reducer machine. So the, the serialization is done at the mapper side and the deserialization is done at the reducer side. And uh, so, so here it does not use Java serialization and Hadoop has its own set of data types for its serialization. So they have its own set of data types for representing the key value pairs because the very first thing we have understood about the MapRis framework is that we have to work only with the key value pairs. So Hadoop has its own set of data types for representing key value pairs. It's because uh, for efficient serialization over the network, and that's why I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, you guys to figure out that why Java serialization use, is not using Hadoop. And okay, the second video. So yeah. Um, I have one question. Uh, I have read about uh, the other thing like uh, marshalling and unmarshalling. So are they same? Like yes. marshalling does marshalling and serialization? Marshalling and unmarshalling concept specifically comes in C, C++. And serialization and deserialization, they are, I mean, one, one and the same thing. That how do you convert your object to the bytes? Here in Java, we talk about byte array. And there in C++, it converts, it gets again converted to byte arrays itself. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. So while implementing mapper and reducer functionality, so you will see that. Uh, very soon that when we are going to write the mapper and uh, reduce our logic we need to emit or write only Hadoop primitive data types or your custom class extending from writable or writable comparable interface basically here it's uh, talking about custom key and the custom values well, let us not worry about this what he is saying what we are what we mean by this that we'll see that we have the input key input value and the output key and output value. Just now the diagram I have drawn it, let's say this is a mapper. And here we have a reducer. Reducer also receives input key and the input value. You will also emit output key and the output value. So the input key and the input value and the output key and the output value should be of Hadoop data type. The rest of the the rest of the functionality, that means when you want to write the logic, the logic can use your Java data type. Java has its own set of data that everybody knows, right? So, uh, so, uh, for ex uh, so when you are working, when you are writing your mapper and reducer, the, this bit, it means that, this particular, this particular bit means that the input key, input value, Output key, output value, everything has to be represented through Hadoop primitive or Hadoop data types. And what are those Hadoop data types? It's just a box data types or it's you can it's a wrapper of your wrapper over your primitive tags. So here don't consider the integer is your box. Okay, generally int is your primitive. Capital long is an object, it's a box data type. Small long is a primitive capital float so if you see that i'm writing here float f l o t f it's a so it's a, it's a box data type in the primitive is small f here it is a small byte string string you can have a char but char is a different string so double it's small double okay null small null boolean boolean so so you have these java data types and the corresponding, if you want to make an analogy, that uh, if you want to make analogy between Java data types and the Hadoop data types, so if it is integer in Hadoop, it be, it's int writable, long, long writable, float, float writable, byte, byte writable, string, text, double, double writable, null, null writable, boolean, boolean writable. You are seeing this here, right? Writable, there is an interface by name writable. So that's one of the interface. Writable is an interface. We'll talk about that interface later. So writable, that's an interface. And using this interface, you'll be writing your own custom keys and custom values. We'll talk about this writable and the writable comparable interfaces later. Okay, but for the time being, uh, just you are making an analogy. And if you consider that if 
if uh, and uh, let's say when writing a MapReduce code, you think that this particular key is of type integer, so the data type would be inwritable. If you think that if this key or a value is, is of type string, you will not represent them as a string, it will be a text. Okay, you can go ahead and uh, give that as a string, but then you will get a compilation error. So you have to understand this, that whenever you think that uh, few, if any of the key value pairs is something like long, then you have to represent the long writable. If it is a float, float writable, string, text, right? Okay, so we have already done few of examples. So in um, so you, if you have gone through lecture 13, lecture 14, then we have solved the word count problem wherein uh, from the mapper what was the output key and the output value and then uh, reducer do you remember what is reducer output key and the output value okay so from the mapper the output key is of type word the output key is a word and the output Next value is one right and the from the reducer the output key was the word again and the output value was the summation so now the word if you want to the word in java data type it's a string but then you want it since it's an output key and you are emitting an output key from your mapper it will be of type text one is of type inflatable because it's an integer but then you have to map it to the hardware type so it's an inflatable so this will be a text Summation. Summation could be an inwritable, and if you think it could be bigger, then you can make it as a long writable. It's up to you. Inwritable or long writable. Right? So, this is how you will map uh, once you solve a map it is job uh, conceptually, then you will uh, map, you will actually uh, map the corresponding output key output value through this, uh, to uh, map your corresponding output key and output value to your hardware type. So word and one, word and the summation, the word is of type text, the one is of type inwritable, word text, sum and inwritable. Similarly, we have also solved the inverted indexing problem in lecture 13 and lecture 14 again. So if you remember, uh, for the inverted indexing problem, output key and the output value. Output key was word, output value was the file name. And the reducer, the output key was the word, and the output value was comma separated list of file names. Comma separated list of file, comma separated file names. All right. So the word is of type text. The file name, of course, it will be of type text. The word is again of type text comma separated list of file names it could again be text please understand text means in java it was string so that's why we are representing as a text as an hadoop data type so in what next examples again the same example word and the file name word and the concatenation of the files in which the word has appeared so all are text here similarly we yeah sorry Interruption. I have a question actually. Um, um, like, if you're searching for, let's just say, some address which might consist of some letters and some uh, numbers as well. So, is there any um, like uh, alpha numeric? Uh -huh. Yes, alpha numeric. Yeah. So you will represent that as a. Text. So we need to represent that as text. Text. Because if you try to convert into any of the numeric data types like data like integer or a long then it will give you number format exception okay okay, okay. you're getting my point uh just let me So you are asking me what is an appropriate data type that cons that a line consisting of some uh, numer numeric uh, numeric value as well as a 
some characters. So the best data type yes. is to represent them as a uh, string because you cannot represent them uh, as a numeric. So let me just give you a quick example here. Right click new class uh, sample. String str. So one two three shaker, and let's say if you want to convert into into let's you want to convert into integer or whatever, it will give you an exception which is your number format exception. I say integer dot parse string, integer parse int and str what i'm trying to do with this integer percent i'm trying to parse this as an integer but this is not an integer so you try to run it as you might get number format exception i think yeah number format exception it cannot convert into integer similarly it cannot be converted to double it cannot be converted into uh, this particular string cannot be convert, cannot be converted double cannot be converted to long cannot be converted to anything so the best data type is string that is your text if i have to map it to how to data type Now let's say average, uh, if you remember again, the output key and the output value. So the output key and the output value from the mapper, it was the first character of the word. And it was the length of the word. And the, from the reducer, the output key was the first character and then it was the average. It's an average. And if I have to, if I have to map the data types, the first character could be, a, it would be a text. The length of the word, it will, it can, it can be intritable. The first character again can be a text. And then average, average could be a double writable or or float writable. So that's how you can now that's how you can choose your data. That's how, how how you have to choose your data types for your key value pairs. So that, that that's the first thing uh, you have to understand about the data types. Okay. And remember that when we are talking about the uh, map, when we are talking, when we are talking about the MapReduce concepts overview, uh, then we have made an assumption that how a key value, how a record will be converted, will be converted to key value pair. Again, I am drawing the same diagram, mapper and reducer. Map receives an input key and the input value, and we have understood that what was this input key and the input value. This input key and the input value was a record will be converted in key value pair. And according to our according to our basic definition, record was a one complete line. And when we were doing that, we made an assumption that a record or a complete line will is converted to key value pair with the key as a line number and the value as an entire record or entire line. That was our assumption. If you remember that, right? So for example, in an input split or in a block of data, there are three records. So these three records, we made an assumption that these three records will be converted into key value pair by key as a line number and the value as the entire line. So high however you was one line in your input split, it, it got converted to key value pair with a key as a zero and the value as a complete line. Similarly, I am fine is converted into key value pair with key as one. That's your line number one and the I am fine is your value. Similarly, the third line, uh, how are you doing? Uh, key, uh, la, key is your two, that's your line number, and the value is the entire line, that's your how are you doing. Okay, so that was the assumption we made it. Now, I would like to remove that assumption. The assumption is basically who converts the record into key value pair. So the question is who converts who converts the record 
are the lines from input split into key value pair so this guy the name of that guy who does this job for us that's converting the key converting the record into key value pair it is done by your input format and input format has internally one other guy which is known as a record reader the name itself says that this record reader it reads the record right and converts the record into key value pair so there are a lot of input formats behind the scenes the basic input format which we use it for which will use it for a i'm into two three jobs we'll use it for sure so that's your text input format that's your default input format or your you can say it's a default input format when we say it's a default input format it basically means that in your MapReduce job if you don't specify that which input format to be used then it will use the text input format that's the that's the meaning of your default anything default means if you don't specify that will be used so when we say text input format is the default input format it means that in a MapReduce job if you don't specify any input format then the d then this input format will be used right now so, uh, so again coming back to the same the question who converts the record or the line from the input split into key value pair it's an input format so input format will tell what is the input key and the input value to our map fun mapper function so input format will tell what is the input key and the input value type to our map function or to our map task so remember the diagram the map receives input key and the input value and it outputs out and it you emit output key and the output value so this input key and the input value it is determined by the input key type sorry input format so this input key and the input value it is determined by this input format right so the first thing you need to understand that whenever you write a map produce job you need to see that what is the input format i'm going to use that's the first thing because the input format will tell you that what is the input can the input type uh, that will be given to you to your map function and anyways this output key and the output value will be determined by the developer that means you will be determined by you because that's a logic you are going to write right determined by now the uh, the base class is your file input format that's your uh, base class so various other classes that has extended from these are text input format key value text input format sequence file input format there is a db input format a combined file input format there are a lot of input formats which has been written but they are specialized for uh, but they are specialized for uh, various purpose i mean you can use it um, uh, you can use it when you need it because they are um, uh, not specialized i mean to say they give you different different key value pairs and then you can use them based on the based on your scenarios or based on uh, if you have some specific uh, specific input key value pairs you require for your map job you can use it so but for the time being for uh, various map for the upcoming let's say uh, five or six map job we are going to use the very basic one which is your text input format and so default uh, and it's a default input format as i've explained you now what this text input format uh, gives us so given a record given a record what is record at one complete line given a record or a one complete line that record will be converted key value pair with key as the offset of the line and the value as the entire line that entire line till the new line characters value and if you remember this is our assumption instead of offset i was telling you the line number 
instead of offset i was telling the line number right and the entire line as a value so this is your entire record so text input for so that was the assumption if you remember that right so text input format it gives us it takes up it takes up one record that's your one line and it will give us the key as the line number and the value line number or offset you can say and the value as the of as, as the entire line great and the offset is of type the text input format the offset is of type long writable and the value is of type text that's your entire record comes as a uh, value just one minute okay now coming back to your uh, word count problem so the word count problem the mapper the input key and the input value and the output key and the output value the output key and the output value you also you already knew that it is going to be text and this is going to be the int writable now you have already assumed that we are going to use our that we are going to use a text input format so this input key will be of type long writable and the input value will be of type text so that's the first step and that's how you're gonna write your mapper class let me just take let me just take to the eclipse we are i'm not i'm just going to tell you uh but in the next class i'll we will write the full blown uh, uh full map class reduce class and private class right now for the explanation purpose i'm gonna uh give you one one i mean i'm gonna explain you while we are seeing the concepts let me give the name as a word count mapper now how do you write your mapper class now the same diagram i'm going to use it so when we are writing a mapper class you need to extend from the you need to extend from the uh, base class that's your mapper class so here i'm going to write it mapper long writable text text in writable okay extends mapper control space and that's the package or apache hadoop map reduce so now key in value in key out value out so when you are writing this mapper so key in is your long writable so here if you want to make a one to one mapping so this is your key in this is a input key input value output key output value so input key is a long writable val value in is a text value key out that's your output key is a text output value is your int writable So key in long writable. Okay. 
text text and this will be intractable and that's the first step of how to write your mapper class that's easy right so you write you create your class extends from your base class from the map base class which is your org under the package or apache hadoop map reduce package and then you specify input key input value output can the output value and this we have determined using the using the business logic right the output can the output value we know how to determine it and this along writable in text the input can the input value came up with the which input format you're gonna use it now i and then you actually write your map method so you don't have to worry with the eclipse it becomes very easy to write the code so i right click here go to source and i actually wanted to overwrite the my parent or the base class map method uh, override and implement methods so it will show me that which all methods can i overwrite I can override each of them. I can override the cleanup. I can override the map. I can override the run. I can override the setup. Let us not worry about any of the method. I'm going to override this map method. Just map method. And it has taken all the necessary arguments to my method. I don't have to worry, worry about anything here. And I will remove this. And that's, and that's where I'm going to write my mapper logic and if you remember the map method which i have explained you previous in the previous lectures that when you are writing a map method you have to always think one record in mind because as i have explained you in a couple of minutes back also that a record a one line gets converted to key value pair and your and your map method gets called so with one key value pair you will get one key value pair at a time and then you write your logic and you output the key value pair and let us write let me let me write the let me write the logic here uh, that what you have seen in the word count that you're gonna break the line into individual words so please go through the lectures you will see that so first and the foremost and please also understand that only the input key only the key value pairs are represented using the um, uh, Hadoop data types. The rest of them, the logic will be written using the Java data types. Okay, so here, this particular context, I can actually remove it. Uh, the entire map reduce context and all. Now, string, I can take, I'm just writing in a very a simple form, first and the foremost. I can very well ignore my key. Now, value is coming. String, my value my input value i can write that's my object my input value is equal to value dot to string once you get the string object you actually string you split them into words again i would like you everyone to go through the uh, my previous lecture that what we have assumed when we're writing this map uh, code i mean just conceptually dot split slash slash w plus that's an odd that's an uh, uh what do you say that's a regular expression and if you want to quickly understand that how this regular expression works what do i do if i want to verify that uh, whether uh what is this regular expression does i quickly write this kind of a main method and i will write i am fine and then i can put few spaces put a comma put full stop uh my name is comma commas anything can come right it could be any arbitrary string and what does this give me if i use that particular uh, that particular um regular expression now if you see that i need only words right if this is the line which is coming to which is coming as a key or a, which is coming as a value then i need only words because my problem was my problems my problem statement was to count the number of words so i don't want uh, this dot i don't want any commas i need i am fine my name is and this one the rest of the things i don't need space okay space can come okay fine but i don't need any extra special characters and i need just only words 
so for I'm I'm just wanted to see that how does it works for string w colon splits what I'm doing here I'm iterating over my splits and I'm outputting what does it gives me let me run so if you see this here it's giving me I am fine my name is Som Shekhar it has actually given me the words so this regular expression is gonna is gonna work for me if I put w what will happen small small w then this regular expression will give me spaces commas also I believe you can see that it has not given any word it has given something else it has given me semicolons and spaces and everything so this small w plus is not gonna work the capital w is basically stands for it's as good as you say if you guys are comfortable if you guys know this regular expression it's actually this a sorry a capital a to small z capital z it includes everything and 0 to 9 something like this so you it includes the words basically so it's a short form for that complicated regular expression that you uh, that you specified as a capital w plus so the, and if i use this regular expression then i will get my only the words and that's what i need in my word count problem i don't need anything else i need the full words then you actually iterate over the words within each iteration you will get so you're iterating over the splits with each iteration you will get your words i can very well check whether it's a, a space or not i don't want to count the space i just want to count the words so words dot length i can check whether the word dot length greater than one or not so that means it will i need i want to process only the words not the spaces once i have got the words because in the if condition i will get only the words which are valid words more than one character uh, more than length more than uh, uh, more than a length having greater than one right not space so now it's fine and you remember that we have to output the word and the value as one the key is a word so you use this context object you use this context object and you say context dot write new text of word and new in writable of one and that's your mapper logic that's it this is as simple as you have written the mapper logic is done you have written your mapper class and what logic will go inside the map method that's it okay let's go ahead guys can you see my screen yes yes okay uh, and the same thing i have actually we have written in a code but this is just a sample code here assuming text input format is used in your word count problem the map function will look like as follows and we know now that how to write a map method right so public void map long writable offset text value context object and this is what will go if you are if you are perform if you are solving the word count problem this is what the logic will go you're gonna break the input value into individual words and collect them in an array you iterate over the array elements and the okay this is something else if the word is starting with a vowel you emit the word and one right now i have not put any condition here in the code i have not put any condition which actually checks whether the word is a uh, starting with a vowel or not i have i am just emitting all the words right here there is no such condition you are just checking whether the word is not is a space or not all the words you are just emitting the key value pair as a word and the one okay and this is the actual logic uh, break the input value into individual words so you actually take you actually take the value convert to java array types string then you split then you iterate over the array elements and you are outputting the word and the value as one okay so this is the same actually repetition 
uh, word count problem the repetition what we have done counting the number of times a word has appeared in a file so we have actually done this what i want to go here is word count producer now now once you have once if you remember let me again uh, uh, quickly explain you this so if you remember uh, that word count problem let me take um, two machines here three machines so in the above two machines map task is running in the below machine the reducer task is running this is one block of data another block of data two map tasks are running the same map logic is working and here you have couple of key value pairs let's say a comma one b comma one a, a you can consider as a word right c comma one here you can have a, a comma one a comma one b comma one then it goes to your reduce machine whether it is a task is whether it is a task gonna run this is a network so you have a comma one b comma one c comma one and this is also here a comma one a comma one what happens here for the very first thing guys do anyone remember this anyone remember this you have group by key operation group by key operation so you have a comma there are three a's one comma one comma one then you have two b's one comma one you have a c only one it basically forms the key and a list of values so it's a key and it's a list of values which actually goes and input to your reduce method right so if you see that uh, lectures you will clearly understand and now i'm gonna write the code for my reducer class uh, so yeah Actually, uh, I have one question. This uh, like uh, sh uh, sort and sh uh, shuffle or group by uh, does it happen uh, before it uh, before that uh, data reaches to reducer or it happens you know when the data goes into the redu uh, reducer? No, no, it happens before your reduce method gets called. <clears throat> so the reduce method, the first and the foremost, the group by key operation will happen, and once the group by key operation is done your reduce method will be called yeah okay thanks yeah now here now let us let me write the what count reducer class okay let us You have the mapper. We have written word count mapper. Where the input key was the long writable. Input value was text. Output key was output key is text. Output value was in writable. Now we are gonna write our word count reducer now. For which again we have to determine our input key and the input value. This will be the input key, input value, and the output key you have already determined. That's your word and the summation. So that will, that is text, and the value was int or long writable. Let it be long writable. Let's say. right so that input key will be the text because the output of the mapper goes to reducer right and you're not changing the key value pairs anywhere in between you cannot change it so this is text input value will be in writable so you say extends
video sir and again if you see that is key in value in and key out value out input key input value so the input key is your text input value is your int writable out output key is your text output value is your long writable So it's a text in writable. This is your text, and that's your long writable. So that's it guys so you have written your what come producer and the corresponding method you actually write it like this you right click resource override implement methods so that will show up the methods present in your base class the reducer class and you have all these methods which you can override it the one which i'm going to use it right now is reduce and interestingly if you see here you have a text you have a uh, iterable list of values right if you remember it's a list of values the output of the grouping operation is an input to your reduce method output of the grouping operation just now we saw it's a list key and a list of values key and a list of values and you can actually uh, I can take key I'm just in argument names key values I can give as a values and here context And if you remember what we're gonna do to solve our map this job, the business problem was to count the number of words which are starting with the which are start count the number of words, not anything, count the just number of words. And the output of the grouping operation you have just seen. It's a word and one comma one comma one. And if I have to find out that how many times this word has appeared I just need to sum it up 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 4 ones so the output the summation the output this is your output key and this could this will be output value that's it so so it's coming as an input input is this is your input key and list of values and the output key will be the same and the output value will be the summation No, integer so that's how you will do the sum integer sum is equal to zero and then you iterate for int writable for int writable val colon values so what you are doing here you are iterating over these values which are of type int writable so every time you iterate you get a value of type int writable and then you have to sum it up sum is equal to sum plus well but remember sum is of type integer val is of type int writable so you cannot add it up so you say val dot get so the get method will return you the corresponding integer value and then you can sum it up and after you are done the iteration is done so context dot write the same context here you are going to write it context dot write uh, in output key so the key will be the same as an input key and the value will be new in writable long writable right because the output values of type long writable new long writable of my summation I cannot just pass as a sum because sum is of type integer please understand that either you take it as a okay so you cannot pass the Java data type that's why I'm explicitly converting into my Hadoop data by creating a new object. The same thing I have done when I was doing it here, new int writable, new text. So I cannot pass the word which is of string data type, which is in Java, 
because I we have understood that the out the key value type will be of Hadoop data type, and here the output key is of type text. So you see that here, we are emitting the uh, key value pairs. So the output key value pairs, if you have observed, it is always done through your context object. So this context object is helpful for outputting output key value pairs or for emitting outputting or emitting is the appropriate word output key value pairs. So this is how you're gonna write your mapper and reducer class. But this is not the but this is not the end. You have to write the last bit, which is your driver code. But before we write the driver code, there are a few concepts which we gonna which we have to see. Okay. And this particular diagram is the heart of the MapReduce framework. The entire MapReduce job just revolves in this diagram. So if you have understood this diagram clearly and thoroughly, then there is nothing there left in the MapReduce job. The entire MapReduce job works revolves around this. So uh, you have to actually under pay, uh, so uh, you have to actually understand here that how uh, this uh, what are the various phases that goes in your in in your MapReduce job. So, so here you have. Let's say there are three blocks of data, B1, B2, B3. So, and assuming the input split size is equal to the block size, so you the three blocks of data will be taken up by your three map task. Okay, and let us assume you are doing the same problem, what count problem, so you are emitting the key value pairs here. So here you have an input key value pair, which I am representing as an IKV. IKV stands for your input key value pairs. Here also you have input key value pairs emitting here you also of input key value pair IKVs. Why I am saying input key value pairs? Well, because it is going to go to the reducer, right? So in key value pairs, you, you gen, if you are confused, you remove the I here, key value pairs. So the very first thing what happens before the key value pairs emitted from the mapper, uh, before the key, I mean, so say, sorry, very sorry. So before the key value pairs emitted from the mapper goes to the reducer, it actually gets stored onto their respective local file system where before they before they are stored onto the local file system uh, it partitioner and the sorting will be done on those key value pairs partitioner and sorting again on so partitioner and sorting is done on the mapper machine so please understand partitioner and sorting uh, partitioner works only on the mapper machine sorting is also done here okay once that is done the key value pairs will be transferred to the reducer machine which is known as shuffling and sorting is again done on the reducer machine so that's why as in literature you will find sort and shuffle are used together although i have used here uh, separately sorting is done on the mapper side also sorting is done on the reducer side also sometimes it is combined and it is known as sort shuffle phase so don't get confused so one and the same thing sorting happens at the mapper side sorting happens at the reducer side as well so sorting here okay then it's okay sorry so once it is uh, shuffled that is output of the key value output of the uh, uh, mappers uh, is is transferred over the network and goes to the machine you have a sorting and we also already know it's a grouping so once the grouping is done then the reduce method is gets called so this is the entire uh, uh, process which is happening uh, behind the scenes let us let us dig one by one now, just now we have, uh, uh, I mean to say, we now know how does this map produce a word count problem key value pairs, right? So this is the key value pairs which are emitted from the mapper. R comma one, I'm just taking some examples. So there are word and the one, R one, I one, M one, R one, here apple one, is one, orange, blah, 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 whatever. Now, the first step, it goes, and it also it gets stored onto your it gets stored onto its respective local file system but before that your partitioner and sorting runs let us not worry about the partitioner right now sorting what kind of sorting it does it does uh, lexicographic sorting and the very first thing you need to understand a very important thing that sorting happens only on keys not on values sorting happens only on keys or not on values sorting on values is a very big 
uh, it's an advanced topic of MapReduce framework which we are going to cover at the last that's the last topic and that is known as secondary sorting don't worry about that right now right now just need to understand that sorting happens only on keys not on values ever okay sorting on values the concept is known as secondary sorting we'll talk about that and the lexicographic and it does a what kind of sorting it does a lexicographic sorting which is known as which is basically dictionary based sorting and it uses a quick sort algorithm remember that sorting happens just now i have told you sorting happens at the mapper side also and sorting happens at the reducer side as well the reason is it uses a quick sort algorithm here so if it is sorted out if sorted output is coming from here so one sorted output is coming from here another sorted output is coming from here s1 s2 it does the merge sort so so that's why sorting at the reducer side to improve the sorting at the reducer side uh, the sorting at the mapper side is done okay so you can always question that why sorting is done at two places the reason is that uh, sorting at the reducer phase will be much more faster if it gets a sorted output so to improve the performance sort of uh, ma sort uh, map uh, sorting is done at the mapper side so that the reducer uh, sorting is done quickly so this is the so this is so sorting is done sorting so the very important thing the sorting is done only on keys not on values and it does a dictionary based sorting which is known as lexicographic sorting so once the so going with the same diagram or same example here so the sorted key value pairs will be m1 r1 r1 i1 and similarly here the dictionary based sorting of keys will produce this output and then again shuffling process starts as soon as any of the map tasks gets completed so if you have a what does it means shuffling is nothing but transferring the mapper output to the reducer machine shuffling is nothing but transferring the mapper output to the reducer machine where the reducer task is running and this shuffling process will start as soon as any of the map task gets completed if this map task gets completed then it will start it will start transferring the output it will not wait for this mapper task to get complete because there can be thousands of the map tasks um, are running right and if everyone at one shot at one instant they start sending the output then they will then they will clog the network there will be a lot of network bandwidth consumption and it becomes very slow so that's why the shuffling process will start as soon as any of the map tasks gets completed So let us assume that this map task is over and it has started transferring the output. So it has came up. After some time, this map task has completed and now it has started transferring the output. Now again, the sorting will happen here, as we have known, right? Once the output key value pairs comes here, so again sorting will happen. Again, it will do the lexicographic sorting. Again, it will do now after the lexicographic sorting. We know grouping happens. Grouping is nothing but you know key um, group by key operation or key and it forms a key and a list of values and then it calls the reduce method wherein the reduce method will be called for every key and it will generate this output right so this is what happens so i have uh, we have not talked about we have not spoken about the partitioner we'll speak in a little while we'll talk about that feature okay what are the various important features of MapReduce job if you have seen that okay i'm very sorry the ikv stands for not in input key value pair that was intermediate key value pair i got confused i got this so here that is intermediate key value pair if you see in slides it will ikv is nothing but intermediate key value pairs or the key value pairs emitted from the mapper key value pairs emitted from mapper okay the intermediate key value pair generated by the map phase we have just seen the diagram that it is stored on the local file system of their respective machine it is stored as a sequence file and it is kept on the local file system till the job is completed 
and once completed this out this intermediate output is deleted from the file local file system can anyone tell me why it is necessary to keep the output of your mapper the intermediate key value pairs on to the local file system till the job is completed because it's not guaranteed that the reducer task will start or reducer task will complete successfully in case if the reducer task has failed then you will not run the map task again to generate the output right so if the if the reducer machine has if the reducer task has failed and it is coming up on some other machine then you just need to transfer the output from the mapper machine to that reducer machine you don't want to run it again so that is the reason that the output of the mapper task is kept on to its local file system till the job is completed and once the job is completed it is deleted and data localization concept is not applicable for reducer task why you need to understand that the output of the mapper task is transferred over the network and passed to reducer machine or passed or sent to reducer machine and here it says that values will be arbitrarily ordered and the ordering may vary from every run of same map to job. What does it mean? And we are talking about here ordering. It says that values will be arbitrarily ordered. Output of the grouping operation. It says that output of the grouping operation is a key and a list of values. Output of the grouping operation is a key and a list of values. V1, V2, V3, V4. Let's say there are four values. It says orderings of the values will be arbitrarily ordered and the ordering may vary for every one of the same map job. That means to say that if I am going if I am going to run my map job again for the same key, the ordering can change. V1, it could be V4, it could be V2, it could be V3. I run it again, again for the same key, the ordering can change. That's what it means. The ordering of the values is not guaranteed is not guaranteed. And remember, sorting on keys happens both at the mapper and the reducer phase. Just now we have seen sorting at the mapper phase is just an optimization technique because when the reducer receives the sorted output, then the sorting will be much more faster. There are two most challenges. There are two challenges with respect to your map reduce jobs which we are going to cover uh, later but right now just for the uh, explanation purpose here just for the sake of explanation i'm going to uh, bring out the two challenges in the map produce job you might have already noticed that this network is one thing who is gonna play a very major important trail because the key value pairs key value pairs are transferred over the network And lot of key value pairs will be transferred to the network if you're if you have a lot of if you have a lot of map task. So your main important uh, one of the major concern would be how to reduce the network bandwidth consumption. So if is there any way that I can reduce the network bandwidth consumption uh, or you will say that in other words, how can I reduce the number of key value pairs that are going to be transferred across the network. So you will you will have some techniques like combiner to which will which I'll be introducing later that will help us in reducing the uh, network bandwidth consumption or in other words, the combiner will help us in reducing the key value pairs the number of key value pairs that are going to be transferred across the network but we'll talk about that later that's a first major challenge that's a first challenge here the first challenge as i've just explained that lot of network bandwidth consumption because lot of key value pairs will be transferred across the network 
and your main problem is how can i reduce the network bandwidth how can i reduce the network bandwidth consumption or in other words how can i reduce the number of key value pairs that are going to be transferred across the network Okay, you will we'll talk about that later. The second challenge is the single reducer. That is, if you see that single reducer, what is the problem? The out we have already seen the diagram that output is stored. The key value pairs output is stored onto the respective local file system. Here also it gets stored. So here, if you have a lot of map tasks, let's say uh, you have hundred map tasks: M1, M2, M3, M4 and this is your m100 all the key value pairs so here it generates intermediate key value ikv here here it can be thousands it here can be thousands lot of key value pairs they are going to be stored here in the local file system on to the reducer on if you're running a single reducer machine then the entire output will be going to be stored onto its single look uh, in onto one single machine what could be the problem it can run out of the space so if you have a single reducer, then all the key value pairs needs to be copied to single machine. Of course, yes. So copying will be time consuming because only single guy is there. Copying will be time consuming. Sorting will also be time consuming. And this is the most important problem that if you use a single reducer, that there's a high chances that a single reducer machine might not be able to handle that much amount of data. What I'm trying to say here is, that your single reducer machine has a capacity of let's say 100, 100 gig and the output of the key value pairs, the size of the key value pairs that are getting copied, they exceeds this 100 GB. And if you have the machines only of this capacity, this much of capacity, then your MapReduce job will never succeed. Then what is the solution if you have if you face this scenario, then you will be running multiple reducer, right? So in the in this case, you will run, you might want to load balance the key value pairs by running more than one reducer. So instead of sending the key value pairs, all the key value pairs to one reducer, then you will run two reducers or more than one reducer, maybe let's say three reducer, depending on some conditions. You want, you might want to run one, two or three reducers like that. And in that case, in that case, the uh, output of the key value pairs from the mapper will be will be uh, uh, load balanced. But then, who does the job of sending the key value pairs to different reducer? So here you have a partitioner, the partitioner which runs at the mapper side. So if this partitioner decides. Which key value pair? goes to which producer and it uses this formula behind the scenes it takes the hash code of the key it takes the hash code of the key and modulo by number of reducer modulo by number of reducer you have set hash code of the key and model by number of reducer whatever the value it comes then it will send that key value pair to that reducer and that's why the default partitioner is also known as a hash partitioner the default partitioner is a hash partitioner because it works on the hash code so for example let me just quickly uh, give you this idea
there's a key, let us assume there's a key by name som uh, string key 2 by shekhar there's another key by name sharma and assuming that i have set the number of reducers as 3 in my mapped job integer num reducer equal to let's say 4 i have set num 4 reducer then which all then assuming there is a value associated i am not worried the values because the partitioner will work on the key partitioner will remember that partitioner you have a key value pair you understand that right you always work with the key value pairs So you have a key and a value. What does the hash partitioner works? How does the hash partitioner works? Hash partitioner takes the hash code of your key. Takes the hash code of the key out of this pair. It takes the hash code of the key and does the modulo operator. That's your remainder operation by the number of reducer. So here I'm setting number of reducers four. And these are my keys. So which reset will go? So CISO key one will go to key one dot hash code modulo by number do so Okay, key one will go to one reducer, key one will go to second reducer, key three will go to minus two reducer. Oh, so minus two reducer, there's that such no minus two reducer, right? So generally, what do we do? Either I can do an and operation with the maximum value of my integer, integer dot max value, so that I don't receive. Mm, or you can take an absolute value math.apps so there is no reduce to, so, so now there are no negative values here. so so uh, that's a simple technique which the hash partitioner use it takes the hash it does the same thing it takes the hash code does the model by number of user the other thing which i was actually wanted to do that and operation right uh, i i think and the thing that will do a and operation a bitwise and operation with integer dot maximum value to tell me the same thing yeah so it does the integer maximum value it's basically to convert the negative hash codes to positive hash codes this is what it is preferred to do that it converts for converting negative hash codes to positive hash codes because there are no negative reducer right the reducers number of reducers can only be number of reducers can only be positive the reducer number can always be positive will always be positive
And the few last concepts before we start writing the code, but we will write the code tomorrow. Okay, so number of regarding the number of output files here, it just again when we write the map to the job, you will see that when we one run one reducer, if there is one reducer, then there is only one output file. There is only one output file. It will you will see that output file will consist of R, part hyphen R, and five zeros. If there is one output file, it will always be this. If there are two, if there are two it will be two two output files. If there are number of reducers, if you have set as two, then you'll get two output files, part hyphen R, and like this, part hyphen R five zeros, part hyphen R as four zeros one. Uh, it basically means that number of output files is equal to number of reducers. So if you have a 10 reducers, 10 output files. If you have a 20 reducers, 20 output files. If you have a zero reducer, then, If you have a zero reducer, then number of output files will be equal to the number of map tasks. Mm, don't assume it's a zero, okay? The number of output files will be, if in case of zero reducer, when there are no reducers are running, then the output files will be equal to the number of map tasks. And in that case, the output file will consist of this particular string. It will have a m in it, part hyphen m. So which means that output is coming from the mapper. So when you see that here m, that means output is coming from mapper and in that map it is our number of reducers are set as zero output is coming from and those kinds of jobs where the number of reducers are set explicitly to zero they are known as map only jobs the map only jobs are those jobs where where number of reducers are explicitly set to zero. So that map, those map to job are known as map only jobs. Okay, so tomorrow we will see that how to write our last bit of code a last bit last bit that is your map we have written mapper class we have written reducer class and the last thing which we're going to write is our driver class so tomorrow we'll see how that how to write the driver class and run our map this job on the cluster on our hadoop cluster so we have so in this map this framework when you are going to write the java code we have to write three classes mapper class reducer class driver class so tomorrow we will write mapper class reducer class driver class and then we'll create a jar out of it and then we'll submit our job submit job to kadu cluster and then see the output okay so that will be tomorrow's agenda thank you guys let's meet tomorrow